In this video, I'm going to turn all this steel into all of this. But before we start any project, you always need the raw material. Here's a 24 foot length of 0 0.100 or 100 thousandths of an inch thick steel. The plans don't really specify what thickness. I believe that this thickness is a little bit much, to be honest with you, uh, just for what it is. It's just a jig. And this is all I could get in my area that was easily available. So that's what I bought. So let me prep the first piece and then I'll show you how I did that or at least what I did anyway. All right, as always, first things first, you always need the dimensions that you're gonna cut. Thankfully, these plans come with a really good list. So I'm just going with that. I don't have to stress about anything. So what I did with my mark is I just used one of those paint sticks that you get from uh, uh, like a welding supply store. And I made my mark. What I did is I took the tape measure. Let me see, actually, maybe I can do this a little bit better. All right, there we go. That's a little bit better, it gives you an easier uh, viewing of how I did it. So as you can see, there's the 55 and a half inch mark for the first piece that I'm gonna cut. Now you can see that I made that white line or that pen mark on this side. So basically between the between the 7 sixteenths and the 8 sixteenths if you will and that gave me my half inch or 55 and a half inch mark and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut on this side here of that white line I want to try and keep that white line intact because that is my final piece I also went ahead and made that little white line that's there and that indicates the piece that I want to keep I know that in some uh, places they'll mark an X on the piece that's no good I just didn't want an X on a bunch of pieces and then get confused as to where I was trying to go I know it sounds kind of funny but uh, this just seemed to work better for me in my head and like I said I want to cut on this side of the white line not on the white line or the side where this little dash is so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to prep the piece and show you how I'm starting. Oh, and before I, I forget, these pieces are, for a lack of a better word, they're marked or numbered. So I actually just put the numbered piece on there. That way I can reference the plans or the paperwork. I guess at the same time you could mark the length on the piece, but this one represents the specific piece that you're looking for. All right, what I've done here is just cut a shallow groove kind of to give me a, a line of sight with the blade and I don't have to worry about you know going crooked or just a little bit off it's just been set I didn't put any pressure I just try to follow the line with the part that was being cut and I let the tool do the cutting I didn't put any pressure on it all I'm using is just this little thin cutting wheel that you can see here ideally if I if I could I would use one of those horizontal bandsaws uh, I've used those before and I've, I really like them but this is all I have right now so this is what I'm using you can use a battery operated one. They work fine, but obviously the battery's not gonna last you as long. I'll be using a corded one. I just brought this out just to show you as an example. All right, and here are all the pieces that have been cut. I went ahead and cut the, well, obviously the main jig for the frame, the rear uh, A-arm uh, jigs, so the top and lower, and then the front A-arm uh, jig for centering. I just went through um, two cutting discs, which is really nice, very simple, and about two and a half hours to cut everything. Now, the edges are not prepped and all that, but, you know, I'll get there. The only pieces that I have left are these two little ones and this really long piece here. Now, this is off of uh, three pieces that are uh, that were 24 feet long. I had no choice but to buy this. But I have an idea for something like this, for this piece here. I might need to get another one, but either way, that's another project for my truck. Overall cutting, not too bad. Uh, cutting disc isn't that hard. Um, if you just go slow on these cuts and you know you follow the line, just make your score first with the cutting wheel. It's a lot easier to correct that than to try and correct the full cut. And then basically once you have all the four edges with their scoring, then you can go ahead and make the full cut. Don't go all the way through or, you know, go as far as you can. Just cut through the piece, flip it, and then cut through the piece again, and then do that for all the sides. I find that that was the best way. It's still not perfect, but uh, it does the job and gets the edges to be pretty 
pretty straight. So now that all of this is done, I gotta go ahead and clean all the edges and set something up where I can weld all these pieces together. I did pick up this table not too long ago. Um, it's not necessary, but for me, uh, it was on sale and I could get it. So I'm hoping to use that and help me out uh, with setting these pieces up. But anyway, like I said, let me get to cleaning these edges up and then uh, we'll get to welding the whole jig. All right, for the starting piece or for the, the point where I wanna kinda just test to make sure that my equipment is good and that my pieces are good, I'm gonna start with the rear A-arm uh, jig because it's smaller, it has the least amount of pieces and will allow me to figure out if my settings are good. I'm gonna use these uh, two pieces of scrap metal to just make sure that my setting on my MIG is good, make sure I have good heat and penetration, so that way I know that the welds are solid, that it's not gonna break later on. But before any of that, I am gonna start actually just grinding all the edges, make sure that that's all clean, get rid of any burrs and debris that might be on there, and maybe even give them just a little bit of a cleaning, and then start welding. So I got the rear A-arm jigs uh, built. They are missing, you know, kind of the edges that would go here to hold your piece in, but I can do that at a later date. I'm not overly worried about that. That's why I recommend doing these ones first. They're just super easy. Slap them together. They're all flat pieces that you just weld together. Gets you an idea of what your machine is like while you're doing it. And here we have the front A-arm jig. Now this one, I didn't get it quite as nicely as I would. Uh, it does seem like it went out of uh, skew or shape, so it's not 100% square. I may end up redoing this. I know also that in the photos or the ones that KJ Racing uses, it only has one support here, uh, which is a modification that you can do, but again, you gotta make sure that it is 100% square. I just followed the starter plans or the basic plans in hopes of trying to get this to be as square as I could, but there is a bit of an alignment issue, probably just due to my clamping and welding, it shifted it. I'm also not sure if it was just later in the day or just the temperature, but I had a hard time with a lot of my tacks on the flux core welder. They tended to break and I ended up having to kind of do these like quarter inch, half inch welds, uh, which aren't that great to get it to kind of hold together. Every so often I would hear it pop as it cooled. I think that there's a trick where you could use heat like from a propane or a map burner and that was uh, going to alleviate some of those issues. The other thing is too that maybe I just wasn't holding the gun there or making the tack long enough so that way it would heat the piece more and then slowly cool down rather than rapidly cooling and cracking. It is cold where I'm doing this, so I'm not surprised. Nothing complex about this either. Um, I made these, this piece and this piece first, and then I positioned those pieces after. Just to try and keep as many pieces as flat as possible, it's easier to, well, I found it was easier to do these and then go ahead and build the actual three-dimensional structure that way after. But that's it, just take your time get the alignment right and it'll go together fine. So while I was at it before the night got later than I wanted, I also went ahead and built the frame jig. And now I just did kind of the basic thing, um, getting the main portion of the frame done. Um, I'll add in the later pieces that go in the middle that go as a riser to support the frame that you're gonna build. Um, so far, I think the only issue I had really was just between these two pieces here. Um, I think I had a little bit of junk or something, or maybe it was just the way it was clamped, it was leaning this way. But these two pieces aren't quite as flush as I would have liked, but and that's the way it is. I welded on the top and on the sides here. So here's an example, here's the side weld that I did, and I also welded on top here. I didn't weld underneath, just wanted to keep it flat. Don't think I'll really need it because it's not um, structural, uh, but this holds it enough from flexing and bending and it should be just fine. I'm going to go ahead and continue with um, anything else that I can do and uh, bring you back once that's done. Okay, so having finished as much as I can do on the frame, this is where I am at. Basically, 
got all this done. I am, however, missing some of the notching. I didn't do any of that yet. And this is the front, and as you can tell, I'm missing a chunk that goes here to support the front A arms and part of the frame. Now, I don't know. I checked the instructions, I read the pieces, I cut twice because I made a mistake on the first set and I couldn't get them to line up back and forth and try and get the proper gap that would be here. Don't know why, I, I just, it just didn't make sense to me. Uh, I checked measurements two, three times, four, five times, eight, nine, twenty times and still couldn't figure it out. So at this point, what I think I'm going to do with this section here is I'm actually going to wait till I get all the round tubing and get that all cut and notched and, and set up and ready to go for the build. And that way I'll be able to see exactly what's supposed to be happening here and maybe make something of my, of my own here because honestly, I don't know what it is. But the only important part for me that I could tell is the part that goes there and then the height of here because you're obviously running some pieces that go around here or wherever. I have to double check, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway, that was the brain teaser for me. Um, it caused a bit of frustration for me and I almost flipped the table because I was so annoyed with it. But anyway, I didn't do it. I walked away and came back to it and just decided I was going to wait. Other than that, the frame is pretty much all there. Like I said, I just have to do the notching. There's a little bit of notching that needs to be done here, here, and up here. And that's pretty much it. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, for the most part, except for me where I just had this issue here. Not sure if just the instructions weren't that clear or if I just wasn't understanding something. Either way, I'm not going to worry about it now. As I showed already, I got the rear A-arms already, uh, well, the A-arm jigs. I got those already done. Didn't have an issue there. Uh, it's pretty straightforward and all relatively square. Uh, the measurements were simple and easy come easy go here's the uh, jig for the front a arm uh, supports uh, it's kind of just to hold them in place um, this one was a little bit of tricky because it had a bunch of pieces and it needed to be square as far as i know i think i'm, I'm a little off here and um, i'll find out once i get to it a little bit later i may end up again making my own type of jig just to work for me or i'll uh, just tweak this one a little bit to get it to be a little bit better than what i have right now so overall my experience with this was acceptable uh, the reason why i say acceptable is because that front piece kind of really frustrated me and my mig welder well, i say mig but it's a flux core welder uh, gave me a little bit of trouble mostly because it would crack some of the welds i'm not sure if it's just the steel the way it was twisting or whatever uh, i'm not an expert here uh, maybe it was even the table that i was using maybe there was a bow in it that caused it to uh, get the pieces to flex a little bit either way those were the two big problems that i had um, otherwise it went it went pretty straightforward my tips if you're going to do this is obviously measure two three times just to make sure that you got the piece right and the position right uh, use some squares like these two here uh, this one is aluminum here um, i would recommend getting a steel one just to, to have it be a little bit stronger but both of these i used during the project and they worked fine uh, if i didn't mention it just take your time just do what you need to do um, I would set up at least two weekends to do this project so that way you're not stressing about trying to get it finished within a certain time frame. Uh, it, I mean, I'm, I lost some uh, steel there. Be prepared for that uh, just when you have to correct a mistake. I'll also say that none of this whole thing here is perfect. There are small subtleties where they, they just go off a little bit. I even tried to make all the bottom pieces kind of square with each other and flat across. Um, but again, I just had some rotation in the pieces, even though they were clamped down. Maybe I just didn't clamp it down good enough. So that might be another thing to take into consideration when you're doing this. I even went and cut that piece off from the mainframe just to get it to be a little bit more straight. It was coming up this way and I didn't like that. It had a significant um, gap right in this area here. 
Um, it took me a little longer to get this video out, so I am sorry about that. I ended up having to skip a week just because of, well, it's the holidays and just the timing and trying to get this figured out uh, and make sure that um, I could give you at least some decent information. Now, I highly recommend getting the plans for it. Um, they are made by KJ Racing. I'll, if I remember, I'll put the link in the description below uh, to buying the plans and to all his YouTube videos. So that way you can go check it out for yourself. It's worth the investment because somebody else uh, dealt with all the crap trying to build this stuff. But I said it before, just take your time. That's key here. And uh, there's no rush in doing any of this. It's not, you know, a car that you take to work kind of thing. I am very much looking forward to building this cross cart. Um, I'm actually changing my plans a little bit for what I was originally going to do, but I'm combining two projects into one. Uh, just because uh, it'll make my life a little bit easier and a little bit simpler and obviously a little bit cheaper. But in any case, look, I'm not an expert. Uh, if you want to build one of these, I highly recommend it. There's nothing better than building something yourself and then using it and enjoying it. So on that note, thanks for watching and take it easy.